Now we've all been patiently waiting, and some of us not so patiently waiting, for Creepy Jar's newest update to Green Hell, The Spirits of Amazonia Part 3. The good news is it's coming. They just haven't provided a clear date as of the recording of this video. So while we're waiting, I figured I should share some predictions and questions I have about the new update in regards to what may appear in the game. Please keep in mind, there will be spoilers from the current game, along with potential spoilers if I get any of my predictions right. I also want to say I have zero insider knowledge regarding the development of this game. These thoughts are from my brain and my brain alone. Last but not least, I'm probably going to get some stuff like timelines wrong, but it's all in good fun. So if you enjoy the video, let me know in the comments below and by hitting the like button. I still have more ideas and could do another one if this is something you'd like to see more of. And of course, that also means you're free to hate in the comments as well if I get something wrong. Now let's get to it. One of the more popular discussions about what may come next has to do with the Jeep. In the first story mode, which is technically the last part of the story, we see the Jeep overturned from some sort of accident. However, in SOA Part 2, the Jeep is parked back at the soon-to-be-constructed drug lab, so we at least have an idea of where it first originated. So who crashed the Jeep? It comes down to one simple item, the metal Biden. In the first story, we find the Biden in the crashed Jeep. In SOA Part 2, we also find it in the parked Jeep at the drug lab. So how could it still be in the crashed Jeep if we already took it from the parked Jeep? Well, either Jake gave the metal Biden to someone else and they crashed the Jeep, or someone stole it from him and crashed the Jeep. But the most obvious answer is that Jake crashes the Jeep and he's had the Biden the whole time between the events of Spirits of Amazonia Part 2 and then the original story mode. He doesn't technically lose it until he crashes the Jeep and then you rediscover it in the original story mode along with the grappling gear. So I feel pretty confident with this prediction because there's some hard evidence for continuity with the guess. While we're on the topic of the Jeep and the drug lab, we may see Jake get captured by the cartel. This is evidence in the notes found in the cave with a sleeping bag where they mention capturing someone that, well, let's just say, matches Jake's description. So considering this, I think Jake more than likely escapes using the Jeep and ends up crashing it while trying to escape. However, it's possible the capture may either occur in a cinematic or off camera, maybe even in the opening cinematic trailer after he uses the walkie on the boat from Spirits of Amazonia Part 1. And what about the gold mine? It's absent from Spirits of Amazonia Part 2, which makes sense because the lab is still being built. If we get to see some version of the gold mine, I imagine one of the quest lines we will need to complete will be to save captured natives that are being experimented on by the same group that's putting the lab together. You can see evidence of this in some of the notes around the gold mine in the original story mode. Next, it's probably safe to assume that we'll be traversing to Anaconda Island again. Looking at the new map of the old area for Spirits of Amazonia Part 2, it seems like that's a natural progression of the story. So, how different will the area look? I gotta warn you, this prediction is pure speculation on my part. We're just gonna spitball this one and have some fun with it. My guess is we're going to run into the group that was present on the island and left notes and other items behind that we discover in the original first story. First off, to address the 800 pound gorilla in the room, I don't think the anaconda corpse will be there and more bad news, I don't think we'll be encountering the anaconda at all. I think that area of the island will just be an open, uncomplete area. But let's talk about the teddy bear. I'm hoping the teddy bear has some sort of meaning in the new update. Maybe we see the daughter and the teddy bear together, and what I really hope is that there's some sort of quest line with the teddy bear. Maybe if we find it somewhere and give it to the kid to earn the trust of the group, or the kid has lost it and we have to find it and bring it back to her. Last but not least, will the caiman be there? My guess is no. Perhaps the group's presence keeps it away. These events take place before they are captured by the cartel and taken to the gold mine where they are experimented on in an attempt to find the cure. Now while we're on the topic of Anaconda Island, what about the little microscope Easter egg there? My theory is that it was dropped by the scientists at Omega Camp as they were evacuating the camp and headed to the airstrip for evac out of the jungle. Depending upon where in the timeline we are compared to the original story mode, 
this microscope may or may not be here in the Spirits of Amazonia Part 3 update. Here's some food for thought. In the original storyline, we only interacted with others via walkie-talkies and dream sequences. But even then, the interactions in the dream sequences were very basic. The interesting thing about the Spirits of Amazonia updates is that we actually get to interact with other characters in the game directly and in real time, which presents some cool potential situations for the new update. With that in mind, let's bring up the topic of the Omega Camp. Will we see the scientists and perhaps even be able to interact with them via one or more quest lines? Will we get to see some drama with the unknown mushroom that started it all? Or maybe even some interaction with the scientists and gaining the trust of the nearby tribe at the large village west of Omega Camp. I'd really love to see Jake causing drama with the scientist because judging by how the notes and Ramirez feels about him, he was a bit of a pain in the rear. Or who knows, maybe we see it after it's abandoned and the staff has already hightailed it to the airfield and gotten the heck out of the jungle to quarantine themselves for a year like their communications imply. But I do prefer the idea of them being there and or at least in the process of setting the Omega Camp up. And what about the big tribal village? You know, I don't know. If the flashbacks and dream sequences are any indication, we might see a huge party going on there. If it was abandoned, it would be a huge subversion of our expectations considering the other abandoned camp was in fact not abandoned in Update 2. But will we see Mia there, like we saw in the dream sequence? While it would be really cool, my gut is telling me no. I think at this point of the game, she is probably out of the jungle and is awaiting Jake's return. But who knows? I've been wrong before. <laughs> a lot, as a matter of fact. Now there's one more thing I want to mention. And this is more of me begging Creepy Jar and not so much of a prediction. Please include blow guns and blow darts in the game, or at least poison arrows. Let us use those frog stretchers that have been in the data file since the development of the original game, and maybe the stingray barbs as the darts. This may be our last chance! If they do include them, does that mean that the natives will be immune to them, since the notes in the tutorial tent indicate they practice getting their kids immunity from the poison in the frogs at an early age? Just some food for thoughts. With those blowguns out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing and watching one of my other videos. Thanks again.